I don't know about you guys, but I really miss the good old days when you could walk into a tech store and buy an Intel machine and intuitively know that what you're getting is right for you. After all, a Pentium 3 was faster and better than a Pentium 2, and a Pentium 4 was faster and better than a 3. It was really linear and easy to understand. Fast forward to today, it's way more convoluted and complex. There's so many different types of Intel processors that it's just not always obvious. With that said, I've taken all that information into account and condensed it into this super helpful and concise video which will hopefully help you understand what the difference between each of these processors is and ultimately help you make the right decision so that sleazy salesman doesn't sell you something that's overkill by taking your money and also making sure you don't sell yourself short and get something that might not be enough for your needs. Let's get right into it. To keep things easy to understand, I'm gonna start with a linear approach where we go with the lowest profile processor and gradually make our way to the top tier stuff. Also, I'll limit it to consumer class processors that are found in laptop and desktop, so no tablet processors or Chromebook processors, just the ones you find on the machines I mentioned. At the very bottom of the food chain, we have Intel's Celeron processor. Now, this is designed only for the most primitive of use cases, such as web surfing. So maybe it's Amazon shopping, online banking, checking the news, and occasionally watching some videos on the internet. Those kind of use cases are adequate with this processor. With its low core count and slow clock speeds, Celeron processors can't handle much more than that. I think for 99% of consumers, they should avoid Celeron processors as though their 150 USD or lower price point might be lucrative, they just don't have a good price to performance ratio. Next in line, we have Intel's Pentium processor. While no longer considered the powerhouse it was in the early 2000s, it's still around and kicking. Just like the Celeron, the Pentium's use case is pretty simple and nature, but thanks to a slightly higher core count ranging between 4 to 6 and slightly higher clock speeds, it's able to handle more robust applications like Microsoft Word and Excel, and it can also do slightly better handling of web activities that might need more well power, such as watching full HD content on YouTube without lagging or providing a choppy experience. If you are on the budget side of things, a Pentium processor is a decent proposition as they usually range between 150 to 300 USD in price and can sometimes be even lower than that and they have a considerably better performance to price ratio when compared to the weaker Celeron processors. Moving up, we quickly come into the mainstream series of Intel, also known as your Core series and the most prominent models you hear about include Core i3, i5, i7 and i9. Now starting with Core i3, this is kind of the everyday high efficiency processor by Intel. So just like Intel Pentium, it's able to handle day-to-day -day tasks with relative ease, whether it's web browsing or having word processing applications or number crunching on Microsoft Excel, for example, or well, viewing PDFs. However, it has the added benefit of being able to multitask in a far greater capacity. So it can easily have multiple Excel sheets open at the same time or be running multiple tabs with multiple videos playing and it does not struggle in the slightest. The key difference here is that it can have up to eight cores depending on which model the i3 processor you get with slightly higher clock speeds. Overall, the i3 is definitely a visible step up compared to Pentium and any processor beneath it. However, its price range kind of varies between 300 to 450 USD, sometimes a little bit more, a little bit less. So its value proposition is kind of subjective to your use case, but it's not that common anyway, so the next level up might be better for you. Next up, we have arguably the most popular mid-range mainstream processor, Intel's Core i5. The reason this processor is so popular is because it has the perfect balance between efficiency and power. So it can do all the activities you could do with the lower end processors. However, it has a ton of horsepower, so it can handle more demanding activities like gaming, photo or video editing. It can easily stream 4K content and do all the other light tasks I mentioned. And because depending on which model 
model you get, it has up to 14 distinct core counts. It's capable of some pretty high end multitasking. You can have multiple windows and applications open at the same time, and it does not break a sweat. The i5 is the perfect processor for about 80% of all consumers, in my opinion. It has just the right amount of power to again, give you what you need at the right moment. It's worth noting, i5 processors have a pretty crazy price range ranging anywhere from as little as to around 500 US dollars to as much as 900 US dollars on average, sometimes more, sometimes less, because well, they come in tons of configurations and different types of laptop and desktops. As a result, they're kind of all over the place. It's definitely harder to shop for a good deal because well, an i5 can be similar in performance across various price ranges. But again, this speaks to the versatility of this chip and definitely is a great midpoint. Now we're getting in the big leagues. Next up is Intel's Core i7 chip. This is a far more aggressive processor in nature that's designed for high-end performance, whether it comes in the form of playing the latest gaming titles at higher settings, or perhaps doing complex coding or 3D animation, or perhaps you're doing multi-layer 4K video editing, or you're doing really intense photo editing. Those are the kind of activities the i7 thrives in. It's Core count being as high as up to 20 distinct cores depending on the model means it's capable of robust multitasking and crunching a lot of information very quickly. Now, of course, the compromise here often comes in efficiency. i7 processors don't necessarily have as much battery life as lower end processors might because they're using a lot more power, but they have gotten pretty efficient over the years themselves as well. However, I think the i7 is really only good for anyone who does tap into a lot of heavy end computing through these activities or other activities that might be demanding on your PC. Of course, keep in mind that i7 machines do tend to get fairly expensive, ranging with prices between 900 to as much as 2000 USD, sometimes even higher, depending on how much RAM you get or if you get a GPU or not. But again, i7 is really only truly realized for people who have that kind of a use case. And now we get to the very top of the food chain, the Intel Core i9 chip. This thing has up to 24 distinct processing cores. It's designed only for the most insane of workflows, whether that comes in the form of playing the latest gaming titles at the highest possible setting, or perhaps doing super complex development work or programming, or perhaps you're doing professional animation or 3D animation for a studio, or perhaps you're trying to crunch as much data as possible, as quickly as possible, or even for stuff like 8K video editing. Nonetheless, the i9 chip is designed for extreme cases. And if your use case is going to be watching Granny's YouTube videos on how to cook a pie, well, it's gonna be of no benefit to you. You really have to push this processor to its limits to see what it's capable of. Now, with that said, also keep in mind, an i9 chip is only available on a handful of pre-built desktops and laptops that usually start no lower than around 2,500 US dollars and can go up to two to three times higher in cost depending on the RAM and GPU and other parts that you get along with it. An i9 chip should only be bought by people who have an extreme use case. I would say less than 5% of people would truly benefit from it. Otherwise, a i7 or i5 chip is a far more suitable replacement compared to a i9 processor. All right, let's take a breath of relief. That was a lot of information. However, hopefully by this point, you're feeling far more confident about which kind of processor you might need for your personal use case. Now keep in mind, I did remove a lot of technicalities to keep this video as simple as possible. For example, not all i5 or i7 chips are the same. There's different generations with each generation being a little bit faster than the previous one. There's also U, P and H series level chips within these subclasses, U being ultra efficient chips with H being power hungry or power effective chips and P being somewhere in between. But the guiding principles I did mention with each processor still remain very much static and should serve as a good anchor as to which processor is right for you. So let me know which processor you're most likely to get in the comment section below. And if you have any more questions, if you wanna see more about Intel processors or perhaps you'll learn about AMD processors in a similar capacity, let me know in the comment section below. I can 
can definitely look into making a video on that stuff as well. As always, guys, if you enjoyed the content, if you found it to be helpful, do me a solid and consider subbing to this channel and liking this video. Not only does it help me grow, it genuinely allows me to create more content just like this. Thanks so much for watching. Stay frosty, my friends.